Having been in Thailand with his wife since mid-2018 and for some time with their son, Italian ambassador Lorenzo Galanti talks about his love of traveling in Thailand, which he plans to keep doing until his departure in the middle of next year. My wife and I, we traveled as much as possible to seaside destinations, but also to, to the north. For example, one, one place that really made us fall in love uh, with is uh, the Nan province. We like the green, we like the countryside. I believe it's very important to travel a country in order to understand the country. I like also to walk around town in Bangkok and this, what I call micro-tourism, meaning to walk around in a neighborhood and just find unexpected places, like very nice cafes that you would not expect, or small museums, or a nice shop, a mosque, or a temple. He recounted his time here in Thailand before the pandemic struck, and voiced his enthusiasm as Thailand reopened. One year and a half of normal Thailand at the beginning were extremely exciting, very hectic, a lot of social life, uh, Many things going on uh, from coronation to elections uh, and, uh, you know, very relevant political developments. Uh, uh, Thailand was uh, chairing ASEAN uh, and so on. And then we entered the COVID phase and, and life changed all of a sudden, both in, in terms of uh, strategies and priorities uh, work-wise and in terms of private life. At this point, I think we are looking at Thailand that is reopening. It's a very positive development. We're seeing now the country coming back to life. You know? uh, I, and judging from the traffic, with about 6,000 Italians registered as residents in Thailand, a drop of a few hundred from the pre-COVID days, the ambassador said, despite coming from different continents, there are several similarities between the peoples. I think we are similar in a lifestyle, I would say. We like to work, of course, but at some point uh, you need to enjoy life as well. For example, good food, and I think both populations are very proud of their own food. The importance in personal relations, even in doing business, for example, it is very important uh, that people have the opportunity to know each other. The trust develops by uh, having fun together, having uh, relaxed moments together. His Excellency, however, noted a few differences in the cultures as well. We communicate in a different way. The Thai culture is, is called a high context culture, meaning that the words you speak, the text you convey, is not all of the message you want to convey. You have to infer a lot of things from the context, whereas Italians are very outspoken. I mean, they will talk a lot and <laughs> gesticulate and convey a lot of text, and the meaning is very much in the text. With the embassy in Bangkok covering not only Thailand, but also Cambodia and Laos, Italy's foreign policy has focused more on the Southeast Asian region in recent years. Cooperation on sustainability and climate change are among the key issues at a regional level between the EU and ASEAN. I think that the strategic balance is shifting towards this region very much. We were looking at this area of the world as a fast-growing area last year, ASEAN endorsed our, uh, our candidature to become development partner. Uh, of course, uh, the European Union is a dialogue partner, uh, but Italy as a member state of the European Union had this ambition to become development partner, meaning that there's a number of uh, sectors where we can work together with ASEAN member states. Now, Thailand is uh, for example, one, one of its roles in the, in the ASEAN framework is that of the uh, coordinator for sustainability. And so much of our dialogue with Thailand has been revolving around that. Italy has been very active as, um, as a co-chair of COP26 in Glasgow and uh, as a uh, chair this year of the G20, very active on climate change issues. So we had a number of, of course, a dialogue also through the European Union with the Thai authorities, but also with the, the civil society. And 
Italy's angle on, on climate was um, very much on youth. So we hosted in Milan uh, the Youth for Climate event at the end of September. There were two young delegates from Thailand whom I met personally, and we also organized a webinar with them uh, about their takeaways from Milan. This is an existential issue for the planet. So there's, we need that kind of ambition that comes from the young generation. Another focus for Italy is trade with Thailand and this region, which the ambassador says is going well. Among the main goods being exported from Italy are electronic parts, vehicles, food and wine. There are many Italian investments in Thailand and vice versa. Trade relations flourishing. And despite COVID, there was a smaller setback last year, but this year we're growing again. And we're looking at, probably by the end of the year, at a better result than 2019, which was a record year. Aside from the popular Italian cuisine, wines, arts and designs, as well as its historical landmarks, the ambassador also highlighted Italy's technology as another important aspect of the country. When we look at the International Space Station orbiting around the world, well, some modules of that station are made in Italy, for example. And of course, well, people think of Lamborghini and Ferrari and uh, Maserati, uh, as a great um, example of design, but the technology that is uh, in, in embedded in those uh, cars is, is, is a wonderful expression of uh, what Italy can do best. Hatay Deshiki Turenan, reporting for Thai PBS World.